Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and we've kind of come to the end of the 3D Printing 101 course, but don't worry, there will be more coming in the future. However, it's time that we take a look, get some hands-on experience with the various slicers that you're going to get an opportunity to use. This video is going to be broken up into four parts. Each video is going to deal with one of the top slicers that you're likely to run into and use. Now, I recommend you use whichever slicer your 3D printer manufacturer tells you to use. If they ship their own slicer or if they have one of their own, then you should use that one. But if not, you can pick, and here's a couple of the choices. Now, to save you from having to watch through a slicer that you're not going to use, I'm going to make one video per slicer. Let's go hit the slicers and get some hands-on experience and see if we can slice a, a very tricky model so that you can learn the settings that you need. So in this video, we're going to be analyzing Slitherier here, or Slith, you know, I'm just going to call it Slitherier. Now, to open up Slitherier, you need to actually it does not have an installer, so it does not put a uh, icon on your desktop or in your start menu so you have to just unzip the zip and go to wherever it is and then run it that's because slithrier is actually usually running in the background of another app usually repetier host is the most common place that it's used it's a background slicer but still it can be run by its own and so you might want to try it out and it's simple to get running because of that so the first thing you need to do is bring in a file and you do that by clicking the add button under the platter tab here. Click add, go to where the file is, double click and hit o or hit open or the way that I like to do it is I go to where that file is. I've got my little print projects directory and I click and drag the STL file into it. Now you'll notice that this STL file is too big. So first thing we need to do is scale it down across the top. We've got the scale button right here. So click that scale button and enter the percentage. The percentages go from zero to 100%. So if you want it to be about half the size of the original, you type 50%. Uh, you know, I'm not quite sure that's the right size. So I'm gonna click it, scale it and take it to 45. I know that will work. Now, you cannot move it, wait, yep, you can't move it on the build plate. It will always snap back to the middle. Slithrier always prints things in the exact middle of your build plate, which can be a problem if the exact middle of your build plate has been abused beyond use, but that's the way Slithrier works. Uh, it has other options, but really scaling's the only thing that you can do. I think you might be able to rotate it uh, you can rotate it in 45 degree angles or, or rotate it freely around certain axes. Flip, scale, that's really all that you can do. And I got to that by right mouse clicking. Now, if you go to the 2D view, you can see each of the layers. Uh, how do we navigate through here? Ah, never mind. Let's go to the preview. You go to the preview and you can see how it's going to print. And you've got a little slider down the side here to take a look at it. And this is doing a nice little hex infill pattern and it's going all the way down and it's got a skirt around the outside. Lovely. Except that this is not the way that we want this to print. Uh, we want this to print as a vase, which is to say we want no infill in there. We want nothing on the top and we want it to be uh, a hollow, nice thick walls in fact. So uh, let's see if I can figure out how to do that in here. So my layer height 0.12, that's too big. I'm gonna take it to 0.15, I like that. I'm gonna crank it up to four or five perimeters. I think I'll leave it at four. And I want zero top layers, okay? Then I'm gonna to go to 0% infill here. And it's slowing my computer down a little bit because it's re-slicing it as I change these. Also under print settings here, I can change the support material, I can change the raft layers, uh, the speed that it prints at, the brim, and uh, let's scroll on down, yep, other things, but there we go. I'll go under filament settings here, make sure my filament's correct, yes, nice extrusion multiplier and diameter, 
we're good to go. Temperature is looking about right for PLA. And uh, printer settings, of course, I, I set these all up for my printer before. So let's go back to the preview. And it's already re-sliced it, and it's already redone it. And there it is in vase mode. So very easy to edit those settings and turn it to vase mode. Well, I guess that's done. The only thing that I need to do is export this G-code and get that G-code to my 3D printer. So I will go to Platter, Export G-code. And then I just need to put that in the SD staging directory, which is where I save things. Of course, I'm going to give this a better name. I'm gonna call this uh, Tornado. And then I like to put a little code at the end of my G-code files to, uh, to use up a couple of characters of the name to tell me how it was sliced. Of course, this was sliced for the MP Select. It was sliced in PLA and it was sliced in vase mode. I might also, uh, if I have it available, I sometimes like to say how long it's going to take to print, but in this case, it's not showing me, so the three or doesn't give me an estimate of how long. Those estimates are never accurate, but they do give you a ballpark idea of how long after I hit print am I going to have something to work with. In this case, I don't know it, so I'll leave it there. I hit save and we're good to go. Of course, I'm not going to save this because I still have other slicers to do this with, but you can hit save and then get that G-code file to your 3D printer and 3D print it away. So I hope that this has helped you. If this is the slicer that you're going to be using, I hope that this will uh, give you some ideas about it. As with all of the videos in the 3D Printing 101 series, be sure to check out my blog where it will have some in-depth information about this uh, to help you get going on it. And as always, safety first, and I'll see you next time. Last it. That's right. Nobody will notice.